Today is the feast of the holy name of Jesus. The epistle for today's Mass, this feast of the holy name, is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. In those days, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are on trial today about a good work done to a cripple, as to how this man has been cured, be it known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God has raised from the dead, even in this name does he stand here before you sound. This is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Please stand now for the Holy Gospel, which is from St. Luke, chapter 2. At that time, when eight days were fulfilled for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. His name was called Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. I want you to consider how sacred this name, Jesus, is. Before he was even conceived, God chose that name out for him. If any of you chose out a name before your child was even conceived, it would be something very dear to you. That name must be something of great importance that you never want anyone in your family to ever forget. Well then, imagine how great this name is before God, that he chose it out for his son before his son was even conceived. What love he has for the holy name and what reverence we should have for it. As it says in the letter to the Philippians, God hath exalted him and given him a name which is above all names, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Consider then the great reverence that we should have for the holy name if even those in heaven are to bow down at the mention of his name. So we must make reparation as far as in us lies, for all the misuse for the holy name. Père Lamy, who was a French priest at the time of World War I, he had certain private revelations from God. and Our Lord told him that the cause for World War I was the disregard for the Sabbath day, for the holy day of Sunday, and for the sin of blasphemy. And you think about it, if it's been 90-some years since World War I, has it gotten any better? And the answer is no. Blasphemy is everywhere. And people speak against the Lord. They speak against his name. What punishments must lie in wait for so many souls? And that's why whenever we hear the name of Jesus used irreverently, we should say a little prayer. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We should say a prayer to beg forgiveness for the misuse of the holy name. But consider the great power that there is when we use the name of Jesus as a prayer. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in, of those in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That means that the devils have to bow down at the name of our Lord. And thus our Savior taught his apostles in Mark chapter 16, in my name, in my name, they shall cast out devils. 
And demons flee at the mention of our Savior's name when it's said devoutly and reverently. They fear the holy name. The apostles would come back to our Savior and excitedly tell him what they were able to accomplish in his name. In Luke chapter 10, you read, the apostles said, Lord, the devils are subject to us in thy name. The devils are subject to us in thy name. You read in today's epistle about St. Peter giving this address to the people who were so amazed over the cure of this man who was, had been lame since his birth. He had never in his life been able to walk. His legs must have just been, you know, just completely useless. And at the mention of our Lord's name, remember the man was begging outside the gate of the temple. And Peter came up to him, and the man looked up to Peter, hoping to receive some money. And Peter said, silver and gold I have none, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and walk. And with that, the invocation of the holy name, this man who had never been able to walk in his life was suddenly given the power in his legs to stand up and walk. And he followed Peter into the temple, praising and glorifying the name of the Lord. And that's why Peter would say to the people in the temple, there is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. Think of then the devotion with which you should utter the holy name of Jesus. Every time you say his name with devotion, it will increase love. The grace of God will increase in you. For as it says in Holy Scripture, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Ghost. And so every time you utter a prayer such as Jesus, my Lord and my God, that little act of adoration is increasing the grace of God within you. Say the holy name frequently in a prayer such as Jesus, I love you, save souls. Those prayers work wonders in us and in others. Many, many saints have died with the holy name of Jesus on their lips. For as you know, that is the one requirement to receive the apostolic benediction, the indulgence at the hour of your death, the plenary indulgence. When the priest gives you the apostolic benediction, the rubrics say that the penitence requirement is to say the holy name of Jesus. And that plenary indulgence will come to you at the hour of your death. It's an amazing thing. And if you are not able to utter the holy name with your lips, you are to say it at least in your mind, mentally. And so the saints have often, in their last moments, been that's the last thing they say is the holy name. They pray, Jesus, Jesus, save me. Our Lord said, if you shall ask anything in my name, that I will do. John chapter 14, verse 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, that I will do. If you only prayed with faith, the holy name of Jesus, you would see wonders happen in your life. I know of some girls, young ladies who are teaching. They're on their way to school in the morning, and it was raining heavily. It was the weather was very bad, and the roads were treacherous. The driver was trying to keep control of the car, but it started hydroplaning. She lost control of the vehicle. 
And she awoke her companions who were asleep, and she, she called on them to brace themselves, for there was no doubt they were going to crash. And one of the teachers, waking up, immediately uttered the name of our Lord. She simply said, Jesus, help us. And immediately, like that, the car righted itself on the road, and they were protected. Now consider how many souls there are who in similar situations would never think of saying such a prayer. Or maybe if they uttered the holy name, they do so without any faith, merely as an exclamation. But if you pray with faith, ask anything in my name, and I will do it. I told you last year, of two teachers that I know who were attacked and they were being dragged into the woods and certainly would have suffered terrible things except they invoked the holy name of our Lord. They called on our Savior using his holy name and those would-be attackers immediately let go of them as if something had struck them they cried out. The attackers cried out in pain as if something had hit them and the girls were able to get away. And I want you to remember that, girls. I want you always to remember that. Remember to call on the name of the Lord whenever you are in danger. Pray the holy name with great fervor and devotion and you will be protected. In order that we will have this habit of prayer, of invoking the name of our, our Savior Jesus, you have, to, you have to develop that habit in your life. Whenever you are in any trial or temptation or suffering, you have to develop in yourself the, the habit of saying the holy name of Jesus as a prayer. As St. Paul wrote to the Colossians, whatsoever you do, whatsoever you do, in word or in work, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father by him. Whatever you're doing, invoke our Lord's holy name. It is the shortest of prayers, and yet the most powerful of prayers. The name of the Lord was chosen out by God the Father from all eternity. Remember then the power of his name. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Indeed, it is. St. John, in concluding his gospel, wrote these words. He said, I have written these things that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, you may have life in his name. Consider what he's saying. that you may believe and that believing eternal life will be given to you through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all then make this resolution at the beginning of the year to have a great reverence for the holy name of Jesus. Of course, never to say it haphazardly and certainly never to say it in anger or in a curse but to make reparation for such ill use. And secondly, let us all resolve to pray the name of the Lord with great fervor and devotion that we might see help come to us from on high. Remember that the demons are subject to the holy name of Jesus. So whenever you are in temptation or trials or sufferings, 
invoke the holy name. If you shall ask anything in my name, that I will do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.